I think because people at Art to Life, all of us are doing this art thing and it keeps you really, you know, you talk about humility and I'm going through the same things, you know, like this ride, this is what comes with it. You don't know what you're doing and you get better at figuring it out. Maybe you get faster at coming to the answers, but I... I get stuck in the same way. So I, it's just really easy for me to look at someone's where they are and I know that they're going to get it. So it's so exciting. Okay, so we're in Haramara. I'm in a workshop, teaching a workshop. I'm here with Terry Froelich, who's also a coach at Art to Life. And we're teaching this workshop. And one of the amazing things about workshops are that a lot of the learning happens from, you know, you're doing the exercises and you're painting things and you're learning about color. But I would say half the information and half the ahas come from just sitting around and talking. You know, we got people from all over the world coming to this place and, you know, you add a cocktail or two and then all the really <laughs> interesting conversations start to happen. So we paint all day and, you know, we take some breaks, but we're pretty hard at it. And then when sunset happens, which is happening right now, and it's amazing where I'm looking out over this pool and the sky, it's, it's just so beautiful here. This is very close to Sayulita, north of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. And it's about, you know, 86 degrees, 83 degrees right now. And I'm looking at this pool, it's so beautiful. And we are all um, actually having a cocktail and we're just talking about art and talking about things that are hard, like what's hard and, and different ways of making progress. Welcome to Art to Light a podcast for the creatively curious. My name is Nicholas Wilton, and each week I'll help you rediscover not just the art of your life, but the art in your life. Join me as we explore that perfect blue at twilight, the wild frontiers of art making, and the extraordinary joy of finding your way as you go. First of all, I just want to say hi to Terry. Terry, hi. You haven't been on the podcast yet before, but we work together constantly. So what do you think? Well, <laughs> I think you forgot to say we're looking at the Pacific Ocean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at okay. sunset. Yes. Over a pool. A, okay. A right. pool. It's amazing. So, yeah. Been on many of these uh, workshops, but not the podcast. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we, we, it's kind of, we interrupted the conversation. We're getting drinks, but there were some great questions that we were talking about. And let's dive into this. This is just a conversation. And who has a question? Do you have a question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Cocktails first. Okay. So they're getting, I know yeah, who's got a question. It helps to have a cocktail. I am looking so at Doug, Doug. Doug's got a question. Doug's got a question. Or you got to come over here. Okay. Okay, what's your question? Okay, this is Doug, Doug, who's an amazing painter. And we're going to, whoever asks a question, here's the reward, you guys. We're going to provide links to your Instagram and stuff so people can look you up. So my question is when learning these concepts, which are awesome, and, you know, just kind of diving into working with color and shape and um, celebrating difference and all of these things, how do you honor your own style when using these fundamental ideas and concepts and techniques. Mm. Yeah, Good great question. question. Would you want to jump on that? Or you? No, okay. it's you. <laughs> Would you please All ask, you. answer that? Could some could help? Can I call can I a, phone friend? a friend? <laughs> <laughs> Laughter from the crowd. If no, you can't but see, hear it. <laughs> this is the beautiful thing. When a decision's made between something, between two things, which, you know, if you want to show a beautiful orange color and you want to, if that's the thing you love, you get to decide what you're going to put next to it to make it look like itself more. In other words, contrasts are the things that, that we use in art from a dark shape next to a light shape to being spontaneous next to things that are more controlled. And it's really open ended. We get to, we get to show a difference in any way we want. And when we feel more free, to do this when we feel comfortable and we show that difference and we all do it differently. It's so wide open. You know, if you say to a whole class of people, everyone paint a red dot on the canvas, you can walk around that room and that dot will be in different places. It'll be a different color. Some people will paint it the wrong color. Some people make it big. Some people make it small. We can't help 
our individuality just comes out. So principles are things that we can think about that complement our personality and our own ways of doing it. That they're not rules. A rule is like, everyone, get your protractor out and your ruler. The dot is going to be two inches and it's going to be in the center. Take a ruler. You know, that's a rule. But a principle is like, make a dot that, you know, a red dot that put it in the place that feels good to you. And then we go around and everyone's going to do it differently. And that's the beginning of style, the way you answer the question. Mm, yeah, I agree. I think I think a lot for me, these are just the tools that I need for when I get stuck. Like I try to honor my individual style and I try to do like very bold things. But when I feel like it's not working, then I think I have to review those principles and look at and see what they are and look at my work and then take those tools and say, what needs to change? but not from my own style. Like I will stick with my own style no matter what, but I will use these tools to figure out how to make it better. All right. Okay. So, so I know it's scary, but any, <laughs> uh, what other, what other questions? What's oh, hard, you go. guys? There's oh, you got to come over things. here. Okay. Yeah. Come over to the mic. Well, the thing that I struggle with is loosening up and being free. And I, I hear so much talk about that. Loosen up, be free. Don't be so tight. But whatever I do, no matter how, how I approach it, I always end up being very, you know, I might be loose about color or something, but but the shapes and the, the layout. So is that my style or should I keep struggling to be more loose? <laughs> yeah, great. So it's not loose or tight. I think it's more what you're after is you feeling more like you. You know, we all experience these things where we go to a you know, you go, like I was in Sayulita last night. This is the little town, you guys, uh, near where this resort place is, this Haramara, this really amazing yoga center where we're all sitting. And I was, I was walking through the town and right now it's Christmas time and there's just amazing, uh, there's parades and dancing and music. And I was walking around and it's a total like college party. That's what it sort of, that's what it sounds like. But it's not. It's really different. It's, it's all these, it's all family. It's all these kids. And yeah, there's like rock and roll going and all these things. But I was thinking, God, it just feels so much more inviting. You know, this, it's such a different, like, why is this more comfortable for me? Why do I like this as opposed to like going to a college town, which I have no interest in going to at all? So when you feel comfortable, like that environment, I feel comfortable in it. And I like it for whatever reason. I'm like, I could hang out. I want to party with all these people. It's so fun. It's playful. It's got a different vibe than if I'm in San Francisco. Like, I have no interest in doing that. But here, it feels like the grandfather's out there, the mom, the kids, like everyone's included. So that's an example of, for me, I like that. So I will hang out there. So for you, trying to figure out you, you want to recognize and tune into what feels good for you. That's the answer. It might be protractors and rulers and being really tight. Like that's totally, there's nothing, that's awesome. People have, you know, that's not, it's not tight or loose. It's what feels good to you. And, and often there's the word spaciousness is really important. When you have space, when you're not stressed out and we're all here in this place, we have time. And when, when you have time and you're not stressed out, you fall back into who you are a bit more. And that's why we come to these places to teach workshops because you're more connected to like, oh my God, you know, this is the first time I've actually had 20 minutes to myself to figure out even what I'm doing. I'm just helping kids all the time or I'm so busy. And so that's why we come to these places, but it's, it's really you feeling what's a yes for you. And that can be determined just in the feeling of the, when you do the thing. Does that make sense? You know, we shouldn't say loosen up, loosen up, because that's not the right answer for many people. It's mm -hmm. honoring yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So should we go on to the next question? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, great. great yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay. okay here we say, go. say your name and where you're from, because that's important. Oh, God. I'm Tracy from Rhode Island. Okay. And, uh, in light of what you were saying, <laughs> it's just kind of fascinating to sit and listen to whatever's being said. And then you go, oh, yeah, yeah, I got that. <laughs> and then you try to do it. And it uh, sometimes feels impossible. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if it's like you can get the intellectual aspect of it. And then you're sitting there with like all this stuff in front of you with fabulous teachers and to actually um, carry out the task, you know, in your own special way is really <laughs> difficult. I find, I, mean, yeah. I find it really difficult. What's working for you? If, if is anything, you know, what was happening today where you had like, ah, oh, that helped a little besides the drugs. I mean, we, we yeah. know those help. The, the gummies that we hand out always work. Besides really? I know. That. I just, Stop, I just kidding. blew my He's 30, kidding. 30 <laughs> years of sobriety. No, not really. I didn't. Let's see what worked for me. It's almost like, uh, you, Nick will come around and then Terry, you came around with very different approaches. And you're kind of like, okay, I'm going to try the big brush and do this. And then uh, it's kind of like I just have to sit back, I guess, and just do what what I want to do. Now, I don't know if that works. I feel a little frustrated, which yeah. is fine. Uh, you know, it's, it's yeah. I guess, to be expected because mm-hmm. I'm here to Yeah, when, learn when you're everything. learning mm-hmm. new... Th- yeah, it's a great question. When you're learning new things, which is what we're doing here, it does feel hard it is hard to learn a new thing and it doesn't you it's like trying on a coat that's too big it's not gonna feel so good right away but then there's little little like ah i i understand this a little bit more and then you get this and you get this little piece you know so what's tricky about this is that you're having to listen to some ideas and then everybody has to figure out to them how this principle applies to them, right? Like we were just talking. I don't want to paint loose. I mean, he keeps saying that, but it's kind of irritating. What I want to do is do like cut paper and be really accurate. That's what I like doing. That's why I'm never like, it's. there's no rules. And if something doesn't feel really, really good for too long, you want to stop that because that means it's a kind of a no for you. You know, it literally can break you down. I mean, Terry, you, you know this. It's like we have a thing on these workshops where we've been here for a few days and Tuesday we call it crying Tuesday because, <laughs> because you kind of break down a little bit because you're trying to do this thing, but then there's this breakthrough that's coming after it when you just let go of how you were holding on to everything and open yourself to like, maybe I can try this and try that. And you just let go of the edge of the pool and push off into the un, into the unknown a little bit. And that's where the, some of the answers start start coming in. Yeah. I just wanted to say that, you know, when we first get here, and by the way, this is day two, and Crying Tuesday is tomorrow for all of you <laughs> who are sitting around listening. <laughs> so you got another night to uh, think about it. But, yeah. um, but I, I want to say that when we first get here, we do a little circle and we go around and we introduce ourselves and we ask people, like, why are they here? Or what do they want to do? And I, I will tell you, Probably nine out of 10 of you said, I want to loosen up. I want to be like, I don't want to be so straightforward. I want to have loose shapes. I want to have this. I want to have that. And then we all get into painting and everybody just tightens up and goes back to what they feel comfortable with. Mm. And so many of you said you want to loosen up. Yeah. (laughs) Hands are going up and smiles, I see. And I think that, you know, all of a sudden you try that. And I went around and I was checking who had the clean three inch brush or two inch brush. And I was like, you haven't used that big brush yet on this 12 by 12. (laughs) And I hear people (laughs) gasping in the background. (laughs) But I think that, you know, I think it's super important to get out of your comfort zone. If you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? Like you're among people who are supporting you, people who speak your language, people who are going to encourage you to try something new. And so if it doesn't feel comfortable, it's probably good because that means you're growing and you're learning something and it's going to turn into something else. So I think you have to just welcome that it doesn't feel comfortable and maybe push it. We're day two. We're not making finished paintings. We're just playing. We're experimenting. We're trying different tools. I've gone around and I've seen people have one brush on their palette, one small brush. Oh, I see fingers pointing at people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you can out your neighbor if they're doing that. All right. I want names. No. But like I've said, okay, use yeah. the trowel. Use this little palette. Use the rubber thing. Use, you know, use the big brush. Use different tools you don't use. Because I think like you have to break free from what you were doing if you want to grow. And you know what? If it doesn't feel comfortable at the end of this and if your work is not, if you produced work you didn't like at the end of this, then go back to what you feel comfortable with. But use the tools and the principles 
And, you know, and that's fine. It's all fine because it's what resonates with you. Yeah, that's great. And here's the sort of other thing that's kind of the miracle of it all. That when you don't know what to do, which is hopefully, hopefully we're creating conditions for everyone who's here to not entirely, you're out of your comfort zone a little. Like, I don't know. I've never done this before. I've never done that before. And you get into a situation where you're just not sure and you just have to be like, oh, I don't know. I'll just try this. Then you, all you have is your intuition. And this is the huge takeaway for this week. When the artist, that's the intuition, your intuition is so strong and we need it in the art making, but it will not step in if you're habitual, if you're, you have a lot of ego invested that you got to make this thing. Everyone likes your work and I always do these blue squares and I just keep doing it. Your intuition is not involved. If we can pull the intuition in, that's the deeper, higher knowing and that's that's what makes the amazing art. It's kind of cool. All right, we have yeah. another question. Okay. Say who you are and where you Yeah, from. say your okay. name and, and uh, where you're from. Uh, this is Sanchin, and I am from Port Townsend, Washington. Okay. My problem is every stroke I take, I'm so slow. Everything, it just takes forever. And all this other stuff would be great to incorporate. But when you paint so slow, it's kind of hard to do that. Yeah. So do you mean like, okay, now I got to do a new thing. What will I do? Let me think about this. And that's, there's a lot of thinking. Yes. And then you make a mark. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. It, well, it's. So do you have any ideas? For yeah. Well, that. When, you know, the first time we say, what looks good with really saturated red color is a more unsaturated color. That's a new piece of information. That's going to take a little bit of time to assimilate. I mean, if I, if you didn't know how to drive a car, I would have to spend an hour and a half with you down on that driveway right now saying, look at, you know, this thing goes forward, back. No, you got to keep your foot on the brake. I mean, think about what I'd have to explain. There is no way you would drive that car. It would take a long time. Then you would start and you go real slow. You're learning, you're learning a language. You're learning an approach. And I'm telling you, it's just, it just takes time to answer those questions and, and understand that, oh my God, I've been here before. I know what happens if I make all the shapes the same size. Like at the workshop, everything, I was kind of doing the same kind of mark all the time. And then they pointed it out. And now I'm actually catching myself. I don't know what to do, but at least I'm noticing it, you know. And then you correct it and you do something different. So it's just a usage thing. And the process of learning about how you come up with new ways of being you is why we're actually here on the planet, right? Like that's, we're evolving. You're becoming more yourself. Because you're going to make, and, and what's so great is your art will show that. So, you know, we do some exercises in the workshop. We did a little one this morning, but we'll do it more where we're painting really quickly in 10 minutes where you don't have the luxury of thinking so much. And the intuition comes in and the intuition in art making, your intuition is usually right more often than not. And so we'll demonstrate that and that'll be really good for you to just like go for it, you know. But it's a great question. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, not knowing what to do, you sit there and you try and figure it out. Yeah, it, it takes it takes some time. Yeah. I'm Kim. I'm from Wisconsin most of the time. Anyway, um, I just have a question about differences, which we all know are important and light us up. But I have a question about other elements of design, like repetition and rhythm, which might use some sameness. Yes, so good. And so just if you could just speak to yes, that. Yes, such a good question. And I can't, you know... In the beginning of teaching, we talk about, look at, just put things next to each other that are different. That's what's exciting. You know, if we're, we're all in Mexico right now and we're in this new place and we're sitting in the pool and it's gorgeous and it's so different than, than Wisconsin, right? Which is cold. And so that makes you feel alive. And we talk about that in art, you know, different marks, different colors, contrasts and all that. But, you can repeat the same thing, right? Which is a pattern. You can have the same thing. And then 
which is so great. It's like, oh my God, it's the same thing. Oh my God, it's the same thing. Same thing, same thing. And then there's something in there that is somehow a little different that throws you off that it becomes extra exciting because all we've seen the same thing over and over and over again. So that's how you use repetition. There's nothing wrong with pattern, but the, it's the interruption of pattern that makes pattern feel more like a pattern. So, you know, it's just like you can have repetition and you can do the same thing over and over again, but there's this incredible opportunity to have something slightly off. You know, the Andy Warhol soup cans, you know, it's like repetition, repetition, but the way they were silk screen, there's slight imperfections in each can and you, you really notice those. So, so there's nothing wrong with doing the same thing. It's not just like never do the same thing. It's what do you want us to notice? What is it that you want us to see? And what's the best way to do that? And maybe repetition is that. If you want to talk about color, maybe you don't change the size of any of the shapes. Maybe you don't change the shapes at all and they're all the same and they're on a grid, but all we do is change the color. Then you're going to notice the color really, really well, right? Does that make sense? You know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, so, so pattern is important. You know, repetition is really, really important. But in the beginning, I don't say it because I'm trying to just force the differences uh, so people can start thinking about that. You make a mark. What can you do that's going to be different, that's going to feel, going to make that mark exciting? How can I express myself in a different way? How can I feel differently when I make the next mark? Because ultimately, this thing that I'm making is a result of me feeling different ways and me being able to show up in the world and use my awareness and express myself and do it based on who I am and who I'm becoming. And when we can do that authentically, it's super powerful. And by the way, it's amazing to be with people like that. Thank you all for coming. And we also make incredible art there's an artifact that we get to look at which is which makes this so great we can kind of look at paintings and go god i was really on that day or i was really off when we say that we're meaning we're more alive when we when we are making that thing we're more connected to different aspects of ourselves yeah i think pattern is important in paintings it definitely can help like enhance the painting but today when we did the exercise, which was um, the same shape, different ways, a lot of people pick circles and you guys were doing them different ways. Guilty. And <laughs> guilty. Yeah, I pick circles too. <laughs> but I was thinking of like the Damien Hurst picture, which you haven't showed yet, which are the circles, the dots of all different colors, but they're all the same size and they're on basically a grid. So yes, that is definitely art and that's a pattern. So I think you can do it, but I think you have to learn the principles first and that's maybe where the confusion comes because that's what we're learning right now. So we will change that up or you can change it up once you have the right tools to change that. Question? I do okay. I do have a question. I'll hold it. I'll I, hold it. And what was your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. From? From, from um, Santa Cruz. <laughs> no, 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 no. Where? I'm kidding. From Margaritaville. <laughs> Margaritaville. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I I think this might be a question, but it's it's going to start with a statement. I'm a figurative painter and I've been relatively successful in that and I wanted to loosen up and it's amazing to me and I haven't really applied it, but differences, the abstracts approach to actually making something representational. God, I'm really thinking it's the answer. And that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. I have sold some abstract stuff and, and I'm afraid to show them to you, Nick, because I think they might have just matched someone's sofa. But I'm really interested in the figure. Jennifer Pachinski is my goddess. I love what she does. It's so loose. And I just know that there's so much abstract work in that so to loosen up and all that so I, I really I'm here to learn but I really want to apply these tools to represent the figure for me mm. and is that a question I don't know I'm, I'm hoping it's going to translate for me well Susan on the team our coach Susan Melrath she's always talking about how representational work or figurative it's all shapes yes when it is. she paints she just sees shapes 
eyes, nose, and that's yeah, that's all she sees. Yeah. And so if you've have you taken CBP before? Yes. Yeah. So this year she did a lot of like demonstrations on how how abstract. I mean, figurative work yeah. is built from abstract years, shapes. Built. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I yeah. And so I think that that this is what you learn yes. here that you will yep. apply to that. Sure. Shapes and values. Mm -hmm. Shapes and values. Yeah. yeah. Color. Everything. Uh -huh. So. Yeah. You know, principles are so wonderful because it doesn't matter whether you were talking about sculpture mm -hmm. or we're talking about storytelling or we're talking about poetry or abstract, realistic. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. It's all about differences in contrast. Yes. And, and yes, so you can, you know, if you think of, I mean, the best figurative work is, you know, it's a painting first and subject matter second. Those principles of differences are riddled through it. And yes, you gotta have to sort of figure out if you wanna, how much of the, you know, there's, there's some extra work in there. It's gotta look like a human to you, or it's gotta be what you want. You know, that takes some skill set, learning to draw the human figure. You know, how do you show space in, in on a flat 2D thing? You know, there's things like that, but it is just, abstract it's completely just abstract the whole thing you just it's it's how you're thinking about it you're thinking abstractly mm -hmm. and then yeah you do realism what we want to come away with with a, a tool chest that allows us to go you know what i want to paint trees now i want to paint super realistic things and then two years later i was like i want to paint abstract and then i want to do video i want to do film and then i want to write stories because writing is really similar it seems really different, but the way you put words together, how they sound next to each other, how you end a sentence, how you start another, and the storyline of where the intensity is and then the quiet, all of it relates. It really relates actually to living a life, you know, the subtlety, the loudness, all of that. Yeah. So mm. I love that it, that it, because I don't want to feel this. I want to feel like I might have my realism period here in a couple months, you know, where I'm going to paint realistically. And I want to be able to do that. You know, I don't want to. Art is the thing that you get to have complete freedom over, you know. Yeah. And, and that's just, that's the wonderful thing about it. So I want people to feel that they can traverse and cross boundaries and go wherever they want. You know? mm. Can I just say one more oh, thing? Yeah. That as artists, we, we tend to work alone. And in that solitude, we, we create our own bubble. And just to be in community, certainly to be in community in paradise, and uh, having a margarita and talking and loosening up in every way, not just the paint, yeah. but the, the, the emotion, you know, I hope mm -hmm. I get to cry tomorrow. I don't know, but I, I, I am so excited because this is, this is bloody holistic. Mm. Thank you. So beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about that. That's this community thing is just huge. Thank you. Oh, and I'm getting chocolate right now. Oh this community God. is yeah. great. Oh my God. Thank you. Um, you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, here we go. We're passing out so chocolates I'm right now. You can't see this. If anybody, like, what surprised you the most? What's the most, when you came here, you know, you signed up for this thing. What is, what's the big kind of like, oh my God, I didn't realize X. What's the big takeaway for you? It doesn't have to be art or just anything. Okay, we have somebody okay. over here. All right, all right. We have a <laughs> there were a lot of jokes, a lot okay, of good yeah, answers, yeah. but here comes one. Okay, so I'm Nancy Race from Atlanta. And I really, when I was thinking about coming to this, I was just like going, well, is Nick really going to be the guy that he appears to be <laughs> on on Zoom or whatever? And is careful here, careful here. I know, here. Okay, I know. Yeah. But you know, I've just been thrilled to be under the tutelage of you two, and actually the sense of humor that you bring to it. I mean, yeah. we're constantly laughing, and it makes the learning fun. And there's 18 of us here. We're all on different levels. We all paint very differently, and we can encourage each other as well. And so that, you know, I echo the community feeling. But I just really, y'all are really a blessing to us, and um, you're very, very gifted, and you're so humble. Good Lord. Pa generous and patient to, you know, have to speak to all of us about our painting and actually be encouraging to, some, to us when it might not look so good. So anyway, I just want to thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. Mm. Um, I think because 
people at Art to Life, all of us are doing this art thing. And it keeps you really, you know, you talk about humility and I'm going through the same things, you know, like this ride, this is what comes with it. You don't know what you're doing and you get better at figuring it out. Maybe you get faster at coming to the answers, but I... I get stuck in the same way, so I, it's just really easy for me to look at someone's where they are, and I know that they're going to get it, and, and it's, so it's so exciting. I think, and I, you feel this way, I'm sure, Terry, the same thing. The best part of teaching is watching somebody get something that they didn't know was possible. Like, wait a second, are you? You mean I could paint like I was at home, and I could do it here, and it, you know, and it's just so fun to see people get this it's friggin addicting and so but I, I think it's the fact that we're all making art and it's it's hard sometimes you know that it keeps you grounded in it so but um yeah so it's it's just so much fun i just love it i love this this is where arts life started at workshops you know many years ago in my 20s and i just this was the antidote to being by myself in a studio like oh my god this is so much better because other people are struggling too. Let's just do this together and eat and drink and listen to great music and do this together. And I think it's one of the most fun things to do is just make art uh, with your friends. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yay, applause is happening right now. <laughs> In case they can't hear it. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yeah. So... Any Okay, any uh, little thoughts here? This is great, by the way, you oh, guys. Thanks so much. Joanne's for, coming. Yeah. Some of these folks have not been on a podcast before. Yeah. Uh, have fine. you been on a podcast? Never. Way to go. Where are you from and what's your name? I'm Joanne. I'm from Texas. Today I was and always struggling with when I start out, I start out like having fun, all kinds of different colors and everything. And then when I get to the point where I need to switch over to kind of try to sort things out, I have trouble like picking out the design that I want to have. And without it kind of devolving into large, medium, small shapes. Okay. So. Right. So, yeah, do you know, do you get that? Yeah, I okay. totally. I think that you, you paint, you put your paint down, you put your shapes down, and then you step back and you go, oh my gosh, what's my next move, you know? So sometimes we always talk about you have to make sometimes a bold move and mess up what you put down in order to go back and correct it. And then you have to look at your shapes and you have to say, if you put a big shape and a medium shape and a small shape, are they all the same value? It might be a value thing. It might be a color thing. But I sometimes, when I get to a point where I'm really stuck and is stuck because you like it or is stuck because you don't know where to go next because you like this certain area, what's stuck to you? Stuck because I not sure I like it and I don't know where to go next. Right. When that happens to me, I kind of just make a big, bold move. I just kind of like, kind of destroy what I have because when I go over the shapes with another color or I kind of mess it up with a messy paint, then I'm like, oh boy, this does not look good. And now I have to go in and fix it. And I have to go in and, and figure out like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Like I, I basically, basically wreck what I've already done in order to kind of like, try to figure out and it always ends up something even more incredible comes because you've put a color over another color or you when you fix it you leave a little bit of the undercolor coming through so you just are kind of like it's just it's like that push and pull you know you give a little bit you take a little bit you put a little bit down you take a little bit away and that's when you change your tools and everything we end up doing a lot of layers on these paintings they're not thin so i think that all of these layers and all these things that you're doing is going to end up helping the final painting. So I know it's like day two and you probably are struggling and maybe you do this at home too. But mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. when I get that way, I either, if I can't figure out, and this is why we paint on 12 by 12s. Another thing I do, if I can't figure out a painting, I set it to the side and I grab another one. Mm -hmm. Because I think when I look at it with fresh eyes, mm -hmm. then I'm like, oh, wait a second, there's something happening here. But if you're just pouring over it, like, I don't know what to do next. I don't know. Let me try this. Let me try that. If that's not working for you, then just put it aside and grab another one. I think I'm expecting to get to that sooner. Oh, yeah. Rather yeah. than, you know, mm -hmm. just be patient and kind of follow the path and trial and error, trial and error. I think that that might be part of it. 
I think that's probably part of it. Yeah. We all kind of want it to happen fast, you know? <laughs> yeah. What about you? Yeah. Well, I think we want certainty. We crave it. We want it. We want the plane to land on the time. We want to get on the bus. Everything in our life we want to have like that. We're not so fond of uncertainty, which we also need, but the unknown, the unknown in art is actually the natural tendency of you and the inside of you, the soul of you, the innermost knowing is always wanting to evolve you. It's kind of crazy. And it, and it knows, I just need to pull him or her over here, but they don't know. You don't know. You haven't experienced that before. It's the unknown. It's the mystery. You're always going to be pulled towards that. That's where the growth is. So we got this problem. We want to have certainty. We want to make the painting. Come on, I want it really quick. I just want to get this damn thing over with. And like, and then I did it and I'm a good artist. But the growth of the work comes from going into the dark a little bit. Your soul knows this is the right thing for you. You don't trust it or listen, but it will always tug you towards the mystery of it. So when you're in the murky part of the picture and I'm changing that, it's dark and I don't know, and I, ah, uh, that's where the breakthrough is going to happen. That's where the growth is happening. So you just have to like try to put up with that a little bit and know that that's going to help you. That's going to evolve you. Those mistakes or the things where you're not sure the longer you can stay in that or just like accept it a little bit. You don't have to accept it in other parts of your life, but in art, that's just comes with it. And that's the fast path to making personal, different, authentic work. It's kind of amazing. And it's really no wonder we can't do it. Like we don't, no one teaches us how to be okay with something that we don't know what's going to happen. Like, no, thank you. You know, I don't want to go on a vacation where I don't know where I'm going. Why would I do that? <laughs> in front of people and then have something that I'm going to show people like, no, 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 no. But that's where all the amazing, that's where your brilliance will come out. That's your voice in there. So try to be patient with it. And yeah, the struggle is a good thing in the art. Okay, get ready. Okay. Uh, this is Carrie from... I'm from Vermont and Santa Cruz, California, and I think you pretty much answered this. I see that there are so many decisions to be made in painting all the time, like decisions, decisions, decisions. And I have a question about, the, it's the emotional part about how you handle and how you step into how to, I guess, accept or handle your frustration and your mood of being oh, I can't stand myself, or I can't stand my painting. And I, th I think you kind of answered that, but part of my question is going to be edited. This whole thing will be edited. I just know it. I'm a margarita <laughs> in. Um, but, but part the conversation of it is, is getting better, actually. Yeah. The more we drink. <laughs> part of it is, it is, what's your mindset when you're in that place of, this is so not fun, but I want to keep going. That's yeah. my question. Do you mean when you hate it? Well, you ha you hate it, and you're kind of bringing yourself down, and your yeah. your downness of yourself is like it's like this painting is significant of who you are for some stupid right. reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just yeah. feel like a failure, and you're going to start crying on Tuesday, that uh -huh. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Right. Your painting isn't you, which is yeah. takes a while to realize, you know. And if you really think about it. It's a 79 cent piece of plywood with about a dollar 19 worth of paint on it. And this can completely derail you, you know. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Real, Carrie? You know? Oh my God. Yeah. That's so true. Right. It's like, like, I feel ridiculous yeah, now. Yeah, well, no, I no. Just, but, did I just take off my clothes or what? <laughs> Shit. Oh, sure. Sorry, 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 man. Oh my God! No, <laughs> no, no! But it, we all, we all that you're not your oh thing. God. It's just yeah. look at your paintings are just the evidence of Attempt. your growth. They're Her just attempt. the things you're making. Just think of it like you do a thing and you throw it over your shoulder, and the exciting thing is coming up next, and you do one, and you're always hoping that the thing you're going to do, you're working on, is going to be amazing. It rarely is, but you throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> And then wait, you wait, do wait. it. Are you talking specifically to me? Well, you know. 
<laughs> no, for all of us, <laughs> yes. right? But it's like you don't want to give up the possibility that this could be amazing, right? Like, but mm. it's probably yeah. not. But you don't. You always want to hope. But then you throw it over your shoulder and you do another one. And then you keep going, you keep going. And after a little while, day four of a workshop, perhaps, or day 44 in your life, you look back at the things you made. And that's where you go, oh, my God, look, look where I was 44 days ago. Look where I am now. I can actually see I'm actually improving. You will improve if you just keep doing it. I mean, it's just kind of a miracle. So you can go kicking and screaming or just realize that, like, this is what it looks like for you okay. to be doing all these things. Okay. And and there's a, there's really a sense of play in this, you know, like, oh, my God, you know, I'm just going to like, look what I made. It's a ridiculous thing. But you don't want to pick that up. You know, you don't want to attach yourself to your work. But in the same breath, as you get further along, you're going to sell work. You're going to, you're going to sell all your work at a show. You don't want to pick that up either. Like that's not helpful, right? You, yeah. what you yeah, want to yeah, be yeah. engaged is I'm just freaking into this. this is so interesting. This is so cool. What's happening here? It doesn't seem very impressive, but that is actually when you're present and you're working on the thing. That's as good as it'll ever get. Forget about sales, whether you make them or not. The joy is being present and getting to like learn stuff and like, whoa, I just look at what happened with this color and look what happened when I did this. And, you know, that's Picasso's experience is no better than yours. Right. So this is the what we get. We can start in on art and we can we get this incredible, valuable thing. But don't get confused that don't ruin that by thinking it's got to be like amazing or, or or if it is amazing that you're so great. It has nothing to do with it's that. It's not a symbol of my value. No. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank Phew. you. Phew. I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. You guys, this was really, really, really great. Thank you for doing this and sharing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is this is how we, you know, it's kind of like art, making it up as you go along. We're going to go around here. We're gonna, everyone who has a question, we're going to put them on in the show notes, and they'll have their Instagram account there. So you can see their work. You'll see all the different kinds of work. This is one of the beautiful things about a workshop. Everyone comes. I mean, it's so cool getting to know everybody from a teacher's perspective. And I know, I'm sure Terry has the same thing where it's like, oh my God, everyone's so different. And they have all these different experiences. They want all these different things. So be sure to go to art2life.com and click on podcasts and check out all those people, follow them. It's, you know, one thing, they're all courageous because they just did something they've never done before. <laughs> so they're worthy of, check their work out. So do me a favor and do that. Also, for those of you who are interested, we do a lot of things on color at the workshop. It's a big, huge thing that we include here. But we have a really cool uh, download for those of you guys just listening all about color and, and how to get your arms around it. And um, you can get it for free at colortipspdf.com. Just go there. You can download it. It's sort of a, the cheat sheets of a lot of what we're doing at this workshop. We talk about the different aspects of color. So go for that and check it out. And um, if you enjoy this podcast, please share it with a friend or leave a review. That's always really helpful. That turns out, I didn't know this, but that's how your podcast gets spread around. Because if you get reviews, then the podcast gods think it's cool. And then they share it with other people. <laughs> and, and we just want to help more people. Listen, thanks so much for being here. And Terry, especially, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. That's great. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Yay. Big applause. Woo. Hey, thanks for listening to the Art to Life show. If you enjoyed the podcast, please help me get the word out by sharing it with your friends on Instagram at art to life underscore world. The recording of this and all episodes, along with a place to leave comments, see additional photos, and discover a whole new approach to making art can be found by going to arttolifepodcast.com. And secondly, if you could leave a rating and review and whatever app you're listening on today, I would super, super appreciate it. It makes a big difference. And last but not least, before you go, if you'd like to be on my artist list, every Sunday morning, I send out a video blog all about art making. Go to arttolivepodcast.com to sign up. And all these links are in the show notes, of course. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you next week. Bye.